Hi guys, it's Finn Tony, back with another video, and in this one, I'm going to list my top 10 reunions for the final season of Game of Thrones. Season 8 of Game of Thrones has been hyped up big time. It's going to have fire-breathing dragons versus ice zombies, massive battles, and huge moments. But it's the characters that were the backbone of the show, and the remaining characters are all coming together for the final season. So let's get straight to it. Number 10, The Hound and Sansa. Both these characters have changed a lot. Sansa was once a scared little child and a hostage of the Lannisters, and the Hound was Joffrey's bodyguard. But if you remember back to Sansa's time in King's Landing, she was protected by the Hound, and he actually saved her several times, including being raped by several men. He even offered to take her from King's Landing during Black War. Because she chose not to leave with the Hound, a lot of bad stuff happened to her. But a lot's changed, like I said. Sansa's now the Lady of Winterfell, and the Hound is with the Brotherhood of Out Banners, and an ally to Jon Snow and Daenerys. He's delivered the White to King's Landing, and now he's heading back up to Winterfell. Don't expect lots of hugs and kisses, just subtle words of relief and gratefulness. Sansa being grateful for the Hound, for protecting her, helping Arya, and choosing the right side. And the Hound's relief that Sansa's escaped the Lannisters, matured so much, and gotten back together for family. Number 9, Arya and Melisandre. I see a darkness in you, we will meet again. Now this is not a reunion of love and happiness. Arya returned to Westeros back in Season 7, and now she's at Winterfell. Melisandre was at Dragonstone, arranging a meeting between Jon Snow and Daenerys. And now she's heading back to Vlantis, but she has promised to return to Westeros, because that's where she must die. Melisandre's on Arya's list for taking Gendry away, and I think it's going to get even worse once she hears that she planned on sacrificing him. Arya will want to kill Melisandre, but she'll have to get to the back of the queue. Davos and Jon have both sworn death on Melisandre if she returns to the north. And I think that will happen, maybe under disguise, in her true form, but she might also have some protection as well. Melisandre might have a way of helping against the Night King, using fire magic from the Lord of Light. So Daenerys could protect Melisandre. Arya will still want revenge, and Melisandre might deserve it, but the Long Night is much more important than personal vendettas. Number 8, Sansa and Tyrion. Once a marriage arranged by Tywin Lannister to secure the North for his family. It was never consummated and Sansa married Ramsay Bolton, but there's always been something between Tyrion and Sansa. During her time in King's Landing, Sansa had not many friends, but Tyrion was very kind to her. He could have forced himself upon her on their wedding night, but he chose not to. Sansa will remember that kindness. Sansa has not seen Tyrion since Joffrey's wedding when he was killed. They've both went through a lot, Sansa with Ramsay, and then Tyrion's exile in Essos. But now Tyrion is Hand of the Queen and Sansa Lady of Winterfell, and they're both going to play vital roles in the War for the Dawn. Neither of them are fighters, but they are leaders. There's also a lot of talk about whether Sansa and Tyrion's wedding is still valid. Their marriage was never consummated, and Sansa did remarry, but it seems like sometimes in Westeros, they make the rules up as they go along. Honestly, I don't know what's going to happen between them two in terms of their marriage. I don't know if it's still valid, or they could get remarried again, either by falling in love or through some sort of political marriage. After all this is done, a Stark and Lannister alliance through Tyrion and Sansa might be important. They might be crucial in rebuilding the realm, but we don't know what's going to happen to these characters. A lot of characters are going to die in Season 8. Number 7, Ghost and Jon. There was a scene filmed in Season 7 Episode 2 when Jon Snow leaves for Dragonstone, but it was actually cut. Jon's connection to his direwolf has always been strong. Even when Jon Snow was dead, Ghost stood by his side and was willing to protect the body. The last time we've seen Ghost was when Jon was resurrected, and there is a lot of talk about behind the scenes stuff concerning the direwolves, such as how difficult they are to film and how expensive they can be, and it's obvious the further the shows went on, there's less and less direwolves. Ghost is coming back for the final season. I don't know how many scenes he's going to be in, but he's at least going to be there. But just don't bring him back to kill him off. Number 6, Arya and the Hound. Arya's had many teachers. Her father, Serio Freel, Jack and Hagar. But the Hound was always my favourite, and season 3 and 4 Arya are the best for me. He was on her list, but she needed him. Eventually she did leave him for dead, and a lot's changed since then. As for what kind of reaction Arya's going to give the Hound, will she want him dead? I don't think that's going to happen. He was on her list, but I think she forgives him now, and he will forgive her. There won't be any bad blood between the two. There's going to be a lot of funny and sarcastic words exchanged between them, but they're on the same side, and I think both of them are going to be crucial in the downfall of Cersei Lannister. Arya wants to kill Cersei, and to get to her, she's got to go through the mountain, and we know the Hound will eventually have to fight the mountain. Number 5, Arya and Gendry. So Gendry's back after missing season 4, 5, and 6. He's allied with Jon Snow, and he's even went beyond the wall. It's likely he's going to head back to Winterfell, and that's where Arya is. 
She probably thinks he's dead, so it's going to be a big shock to her when she meets him again. They've got lots of catching up to do, but the dead are coming, so there's probably not going to be much time for this. Probably the first episode and the second episode is going to be all the preparations. As for romantic feelings, I think it is possible. I know some of the fan base think Arya doesn't need love, and others want her to fall for Gendry. Either in some sort of political marriage, if Gendry is made legitimate and becomes a Baratheon and takes over the Stormlands, or some sort of actual romantic relationship. Honestly, Gendry and Arya can be together, and it doesn't have to ruin Arya's character. I know a lot of people don't want her, you know, just to fall in love with someone and become the typical female character. She's never wanted to be a lady, but that doesn't mean she can't fall in love with someone. She's been through so much, and she's lost so many people dear to her. Maybe after all this is done, if she survives and Gendry survives, or maybe someone else survives, they can live happily, either in some lordly castle, or maybe somewhere else. Number 4, John and Arya. So we never really got to see much of John and Arya together, but what we've seen made it very clear that they were very close. In a matter of minutes, the show made it clear that they were very close as children, and I can't wait to see them meet up again. John was the one that gave Arya Needle, and encouraged her desire of not being a lady. John was shocked to learn that Arya was still alive, and Sansa told Arya that John's heart would stop once he sees her. Number 3, Jamie and Bran. Bran's fall starred everything. Jamie is heading to Winterfell now, and it's likely he's going to reach there either in the first episode or the second one. Season 7 showed us that Bran doesn't really have many emotions now, so it's going to be interesting to see Bran's reaction to Jamie. I believe Jamie's going to try and ask for forgiveness, but Bran's not going to be angry and say he doesn't need to forgive Jamie. He had to push him out that window for him to become the Free-Eyed Raven. His fall was necessary. But I do think that Jamie feels obliged to make up for what he's done to Bran, maybe save his life in the War for the Dawn. I also feel that Bran will likely back up Jaime when maybe Daenerys gets suspicious of his intentions. Bran should have seen everything that happened in King's Landing during the season 7 finale. He should have seen that Jaime is genuine and the conversations between Tyrion and Cersei. Number 2 Daenerys and Viserion So with Daenerys' dragons it's always been Drogon, but the other two dragons never get much screen time, but that's going to change big time now. Viserion was killed by the Night King, and now he rides him into battle. Daenerys always seen her dragons as her children. She might need to put her child to rest in order to save the realm, but it might actually be hard for her. But what happens if she hesitates? Her hesitation might allow the Night King to keep his dragon, might cost the lives of one of her dragons, or some sort of massive disaster. And number one, Bran and John. It's all about John's parentage. He's been wanting to tell him for a long time, and with the help of Sam, he knows the full truth now. But when's he going to tell him? This could change everything if it's done early on, or if it's not done early on and save for later, or Bran might never be given the chance. And what happens if he tells him in public or private? There's just so many variables. This is going to shape the entire final season and the future of the realm, and also the relationship between Jon Snow and Daenerys. It might have a huge impact on them, and both of them are crucial against the Arm of the Dead. We need everyone on the same side, especially Jon Snow and Daenerys. But the number one question is, was Bran watching on the boat? So there you go, that's my top 10 reunions for season 8. But I want to hear in the comments below your top 10. You might think differently than me, but I imagine because there's not that many left, you're probably going to have very similar ones. I also want to mention Sansa and Cersei. I think that's going to be a big one as well, and it might be crucial in Cersei's downfall. And also Jon and Sam. John's mostly concerned with the Night King, but Sansa did warn him about Cersei in the south. John just shrugged it off, saying the Lannisters can't march up north. But don't count Cersei out. John and Sam were best friends at the Wall. They were completely different people, but they got on so well, and both of them changed each other for the better. A lot of stuff to do with Sam, you know, you can mention of Bran, because together with Bran, Sam's worked out the truth about John's parentage. The Bran reunion's all about John's parentage, but of course Bran's got more to do than that, and so does Sam. Sam's not all about telling John who he really is. Sam's got a big role to play. So we've got six episodes in the final season. It's likely the first episode is going to be about all these reunions. It looks like the first scene is going to be John and Daenerys arriving at Winterfell. And then shortly after that, we're going to get all the reunions between the characters that are with them in the Dragon Pit. And probably other characters as well. Jamie will probably get to Winterfell at some point, either in the first episode or the second. But after the first two episodes, it's all going to kick off and episode 3 is going to be the big battle at Winterfell. We're still waiting for more news on season 8 and likely a teaser before the end of the year. If anything drops, the video will come out as soon as possible, so make sure you subscribe to get that first. Anyways guys, remember to leave your thoughts in the comments below and if you love Game of Thrones, make sure you subscribe. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.